Git is a revision control system. Basically, that means that it allows you to track changes over time and you can use it with your scripts and any other kind of files that you're working with or developing. So let's look at a workflow here of using Git. Now I'm going to be using a remote Git repository to pull down code and change the code and push it back up. But I just want to also share that you can use this locally with your own scripts without having to need any remote stuff. So if we move into this folder where I have some scripts here and say we want to track the changes of these scripts over time, you can can use git init and that turns this folder into a git repository and then you can start tracking the changes so if i do git status then you'll see that git is now active in this folder if i want to remove git and get rid of the whole github repository thing there is a hidden folder that stores all of the git information so we're just going to remove that folder and if we try to do git status again, git says this is not a git repository. So it's very simple to turn a folder into a git repository and to get rid of it. But remember, you're gonna lose all the information about the changes that you track. So we're gonna be pulling code down to edit and track the changes. And we're gonna be doing it with my website. I have a website here, mrpowerscripts.com, which is actually a GitHub page, which means that it runs directly from this Git repository hosted on GitHub. So any changes that I make to the files in this repository will be immediately reflected on the website itself. And I'm gonna show you that in a second. So first what we need to do is we need to clone the repository. And I'm gonna be doing that with SSH. If you wanna to try to clone my website repository yourself, you're gonna to need to use the HTTPS URL. So we'll copy this URL that points to the Git repository and we'll do Git, oh, let's get out of the scripts folder, Git clone, and then the path to the Git repository. And this can be hosted anywhere. You can have a Git repository on a file server and if you can point to it and access the files, then you can clone the repository. So if we do ls here, we'll see that mrpowerscripts.com, the repository is now cloned to my local machine. So we're gonna cd into that directory and we're gonna do git status. So before it would not have shown this bit here. This is called the remote name. And then here we have the branch name. Let's look at what this remote is. I can type git remote dash v and you'll see that this name here origin corresponds with the url that i entered in to clone okay so now we have the code from the remote repository and we are all up to date so let's start making some changes i'm going to open up my editor here and we can see the mrpowerscripts.com. So let's go to the index and let's just add a new button. So I have copied the last button and I don't know, let's get rid of this URL so it doesn't point anywhere. And let's change the button so that it says poop because that's the kind of maturity that I like to include in my videos. So let's go back over to Git and let's check the status of our repository, git status. Okay, so we'll see that git is telling us that there are some changes in our repository that have not been committed. What is a commit? A commit is saved changes to the repository and commits build up over time. So you can have lots of commits in your repository and you can see those commits by typing git log. So this is actually a list of all the commits that I have made to this repository. Now, if I want to see what specific changes were made in a specific commit, I can look at the commit hash and the commit hash is a unique identifier to the state of the code at the point in time that that commit was created. So you can see that some changes were made to this repository at this time by this person. And it also has a little message that you can add to the commits. So let's take a look at what actually changed in this commit. We're gonna press Q 
to get out of this git log. So we'll type git show, and then we're gonna put the commit hash. And now we're gonna see the changes that were made to the repository in this commit. So red means that code was removed, and green means that code was added. So cool, we can see all of the changes that we have made over time. So we have made changes to the site right now, and in order for those changes to be saved into the repository, we need to make a new commit. So first what we're gonna do is we're gonna add this file to staging, and staged files go into the commit. If I try to make a commit right now, git commit dash vm, and I'll add a message, test, it'll say no changes added to the commit. And you can see it visually that this file is red, so it won't be included in the commit. So what we need to do is add it to the commit first. So we're gonna do git add index.html and press enter. And if we do git status again, we can see that it's green. So now if we create a new commit, the changes are going to be saved in that commit. So we'll do git commit dash vm. V is for verbose, so it'll tell us a bunch of information. And m is to add a message, like the messages that you saw in the log. So we're just gonna put test here. So we're gonna hit enter and it's gonna say, okay, one file was changed and one insertion was created. So if we do git status again, it's gonna give us a little more information. It's gonna say your branch is ahead of origin GitHub pages by one commit. So now if we want to update the website, we need to push the changes to the remote repository. And we can do that with git push and then we put the name of the remote or the remote repository which is origin and then we're going to tell it the branch that we want it to go to which is github pages so we're going to hit enter and it's going to go through its process and it was successful so if we go back to the website now and i hit refresh over here let me see if i can make it a little little bigger if we refresh it you'll see that now there is eight commits in this repository. And if I go to my website and I refresh it as well, we have a new button that says poop. Very classy. So I don't really want a button on my website that says poop, as funny as it is. So this is another nice thing about Git. Say there's a commit that has a change that you don't like. Well, we can go and we can grab the commit hash, which is test, and we can say Git, we want to revert that commit. So we're gonna type Git revert, and we're gonna put the commit hash and press enter and it's going to ask us to verify these changes and we can modify the message if we want and we're gonna just say okay so we're gonna hit control X here and one file was changed and one line was deleted which is uh, the opposite of what it told us before we had added a line so let's look at our git status we are now once again ahead by one commit because you can never change the history of a git repository if you revert a commit you're not removing the old commit you're creating a new commit that removes the changes that you made in an old commit. So if we look at git log, we can see that there is a new commit here that says revert test. This reverts commit and then the commit is here. And you'll see that the last commit is the same commit name. So this is a way to be able to keep track of changes to your files over time. And this is the most simplest basic usage of Git. Git is a very, very deep tool with lots of different things that can help you in your development process or scripting process. But this is the major advantage. Now we are ahead by one commit. So we wanna push this back up to the Git repository. So we're gonna git push origin GitHub pages. And if we go back to GitHub and we hit refresh, you'll see that now there is nine commits. And if we go to the website, there is no longer poop on my website, much cleaner. So that is the very basics of using Git. And you can see that it's very powerful because you can see changes over time. And this is really great for collaborative efforts. Coders can pull code down, they can make changes, they can submit those changes to different repositories. And if problems occur, you can go back and figure out what changed in what commit. When did things go wrong? And then you can use the tools provided by Git to help you troubleshoot it. Or let's say you make some changes 
and you don't like the changes that you've made. You can revert those changes. And it's very good to commit early and often. So let's say you add a new feature to your website and it has some back-end changes and it has some front-end changes. If you put those all in one commit and there's a problem when you deploy, it's very easy to revert those changes with one command. That's Git. Thanks for watching.